good morning corona virus novel corona virus infection apetti healthcare workers endake na ariyende ne petti korche karyangal parayam as a, all of you know novel corona virus had its origin in uh, the wuhan province of uh, uh, china that is the hubei province whose capital is wuhan the novel corona virus in the virology petti parayanengile അത് ഇസ് ഐസ് എ കൊറോണ വൈറസ് അപ്പം നമുക്ക് നേരത്തെ തന്നെ അറിയാം നമ്മൾ മൾട്ടിപ്ലക്സ് പി സി ആർ ഒക്കെ ടെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ യൂഷ്വലി ഹ്യൂമൻ കൊറോണ വൈറസ് നാലെണ്ണം ഉണ്ട് എന്ന സിക്സ്റ്റി ത്രീ ഫോർട്ടി ത്രീ സിക്സ്റ്റി ഫൈവ് എക്സെട്ര സോ അത് അത്രത്തോളം മോർട്ടാലിറ്റി ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്ന ഹ്യൂമൻ കൊറോണ വൈറസസ് അല്ല മാത്രമല്ല ദ ട്രാൻസ്മിസിബിലിറ്റി ഇസ് ഓൾസോ ലെസ് നമ്മളെ ഭീതിപ്പെടുത്തുന്ന കൊറോണ വൈറസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് രണ്ടായിരത്തി രണ്ടിൽ ഉണ്ടായ സാർസ് കൊറോണ വൈറസ് പിന്നെ രണ്ടായിരത്തി പന്ത്രണ്ടിൽ മിഡിൽ ഈസ്റ്റ് കണ്ടുപിടിച്ച് ദ മെർസ് കൊറോണ വൈറസ് പിന്നെ ഇപ്പോൾ നോവൽ കൊറോണ വൈറസ് സോ ഡിസംബർ തേർട്ടി വണ്ണിൽ ഒരു ക്ലസ്റ്റർ ഓഫ് അട്ടിപ്പിക്കൽ ന്യൂമോണിയ ചൈനയിൽ നിന്ന് റിപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്യപ്പെട്ടു ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഹൗ ദിസ് ഡബ്ല്യു എച്ച് ഗോ ടു നോ അബൌട്ട് ദ എ ക്ലസ്റ്ററിംഗ് ഓഫ് കേസ് ഓഫ് അട്ടിപ്പിക്കൽ ന്യൂമോണിയ ദെൻ ബൈ ജാനുവരി സെവൻ ദ ചൈനീസ് സയൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് ഷെയർ ദ ഓൾ ജിനോമിക് സീക്വൻസ് ഡേറ്റ അങ്ങനെയാണ് നോവൽ കൊറോണ വൈറസ് ടു തൗസൻഡ് നയൻറ്റീൻ എന്നുള്ള പേര് അതിന് കൊടുത്തത് ദെൻ വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻ വി ഓൾ നോ സോ ദ സിംറ്റംസ് ഓഫ് നോവൽ കൊറോണ വൈറസ് വാട്ട് വി ഷുഡ് നോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ലോവർ റെസ്പിറി ട്രാക്ക് ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻ സാധാരണ ഒരു ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻസ പോലുള്ള റൈനൈറ്റിസ് ഹെഡ് ഡേക്ക് മയോളജി ഇതൊക്കെ കുറച്ച് കുറവാണ് ദ പ്രിഡോമിനൻ സിംറ്റംസ് ഫീവർ ഡ്രൈ കോഫ് ആൻഡ് ഡിസ്നിയ സോ ഇതാണ് ദ ദ മെയിൻ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് നോവൽ കൊറോണ വൈറസ് ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻ ഡയറി ആയിട്ട് പ്രസൻറ്റ് ചെയ്യാം അറൗണ്ട് ത്രീ പേഴ്സൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് കേസസ് ഹെഡ് ഡേക്ക് റൈനൈറ്റിസ് ഇതൊക്കെ ലെസ് ദാൻ ടെൻ പേഴ്സൻറ്റ് കേസിൻ്റെ വരുന്നുള്ളൂ എക്സസീവ് ഫെറ്റിക്കബിലിറ്റി ഈസ് ബീങ് നോട്ടഡ് സോ നമ്മൾ കേസ് ഡെഫിനിഷൻ ഓഫ് നോവൽ കൊറോണ വൈറസ് പറയുമ്പോൾ so anyone from an affected area nammale the focus has to be on china adhi thana wuhan province lana focus karanam avadeyana ippol nammal nokkayanengil ippo around 29000 cases all over the world report eedullayil 99% of the cases um still are being reported from china and even in the mainland china the epicenter is still wuhan which is a part of the the hubei province baaki around 250 uh, cases aanu world il outside china report eedullathu അപ്പം നമുക്ക് ഏറ്റവും ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള കാര്യം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഓൺ ഗോയിങ് ട്രാൻസ്മിഷൻ നടക്കുന്ന കൺട്രീസ് ഏതാണെന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഇഫ് യു ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ദ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഡയറക്ടറി എനി പേഴ്സൺ കമ്മിങ് ഫ്രം അഫക്റ്റഡ് കൺട്രി ഈസ് ടു ആസ് എ സസ്പെക്ട് ഇവ് സിംറ്റംസ് ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ സസ്പെക്റ്റ് ആണ് സിംറ്റംസ് ഉള്ളവരെ നമ്മൾ അഡ്മിറ്റ് ചെയ്യും അവരുടെ ത്രോട്ട് സ്വാബ് എടുക്കും സിംറ്റംസ് ഇല്ലാത്തവർ ഹോം ഐസൊലേഷനിലാണ് വിടുന്നത് ആസ് ഓഫ് നോ ദ ഡെഫിനിഷൻ ഓഫ് അഫക്റ്റഡ് കൺട്രി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഈ കേസ് റിപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ള എല്ലാ കൺട്രീസും ഉണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ഇതൊരു ചെറിയൊരു കൺഫ്യൂഷൻ ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നുണ്ട് കാരണം ശ്രീലങ്കയിൽ ഒരു കേസ് ഉണ്ട് ഫിൻലാൻഡിൽ ഒരു കേസുണ്ട് സ്പെയിനിൽ ഒരു കേസുണ്ട് ഇറ്റലി മൂന്ന് കേസുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ഈ രാജ്യങ്ങളിൽ നിന്നൊക്കെ വരുന്ന ആൾക്കാരെയും നമ്മൾ ഹോം ഐസൊലേഷനിൽ അയക്കണമെന്നുള്ളതാണ് ആസ് ഓഫ് നോ ദ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഗൈഡ് ലൈൻസ് സൈസ് കാരണം നമ്മുടെ ഒരു എക്സസീവ് പ്രിക്കോഷൻ എടുക്കുന്നത് ബിക്കോസ് യു നോ ദാറ്റ് കേരള ഇസ് എ വെരി പോപ്പുലർ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് അപ്പോൾ ഇവിടെ ഒരു കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി ട്രാൻസ്മിഷൻ ഉണ്ടായി കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ സിറ്റുവേഷൻ മേ ബി മേ എൻഡ് അപ്പ് ജസ്റ്റ് ബീങ് ലൈക്ക് വട്ട് ഈസ് ഹാപ്പനിങ് ഇൻ വുഹാൻ സോ വി ഡോ വോണ്ട് ദാറ്റ് ടു ഹാപ്പൻ സോ ദ കോൺസെപ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് അബൻഡൻ പ്രിക്കോഷൻ അനുസരിച്ചാണ് ഈവൻ ദോ ദ അതർ കൺട്രി സി ഡി സി ഇ സി ഡി സി ഡബ്ല്യു എച്ച് ഒ ഗൈഡ് ലൈൻസ് എക്സെട്രാ സെയ് ദാറ്റ് so the suspect should be people who are coming from countries where ongoing transmission is there kerala guidelines as of now angane alla affected countries ne varunna alla ellarey thane symptomatic anengil so either we take this uh, means admit the patient and take the swab allengil home isolation vidum avashyam illengil asymptomatic aalkarum ee affected countries ne varunna vare nammal home isolation thane aanu vidunnathu but then Uh, now we know that so ee three moon cases inde the primary contacts um kore secondary contacts und wuhan in ivadana 72 pair dey swab eduthu avare ella negative aanu so as of now the the alert the public state emergency nalla the alert was withdrawn uh, on uh, february 7 so probably say uh, after 28 days the state may be declared clear of corona virus that is 28 days from the the first day of detection of the, the index case in kerala aayirikkam ennal polum ഒരു കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി സ്പ്രെഡ് ഒഴിവാക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി വി നീഡ് ടു ബി പ്രട്ടി കെയർഫുൾസ് സോ വാട്ട് ഇൻ ദ കമ്മിങ് ഡേയ്സ് ഇറ്റ് മേ ദ ദ ദ ഡെഫിനിഷൻ കേസ് ഡെഫിനിഷൻ മേ ബി റിവൈസ് ടു ദ ടു പീപ്പിൾ ഹു ആർ കമ്മിങ് ഫ്രം കൺട്രീസ് വെയർ ഓൺ ഗോയിങ് കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി ട്രാൻസ്മിഷൻ ഇസ് ഹാപ്
So in, uh, in each district, we have two nodal centers. One is the medical college and second is the, the district hospital or the general hospital. So usually, they will come to the, the corona care clinic. So, if the patients are coming from these affected countries, if they are symptomatic and if they require an admission, they will be admitted to the, the corona care, the isolation rooms. isolation ward isolation facility, isolation rooms, individual rooms. And then we will sample the patient. So, the E patients in Allah then a sari that is severe acute respiratory infection, the criteria satisfies you know, that is the fever, dry cough, and with or without dyspnea coming from these affected countries, they will be the case uh, will satisfy the case definition. Then what sample you will send that is also important. So, as of now, we know that it is a basically a lower respiratory tract infection. So, that is the basic difference between our influenza and uh, <coughs> this novel coronavirus infection. And, uh, 75% uh, of the patients, you know, it will be just like a gel dosham bole kaana The rest of your 25% patients, you know, mild pneumonia, severe pneumonia, RDS, okay? So, the samples that we are supposed to send in, one is the nasopharyngeal or the throat swab. This is the actually upper respiratory specimen. Ideally, we require a lower respiratory specimen like a very good quality sputum or a, if the patient is intubated or an ET aspirate. Alangil, uh, the bronco alveolar lavash is an ideal specimens, but usually the kitta thila and trike of five on the sputum kana thila and we don't want to expectorate the induced sputum production and induce either any aerosolized any chance. So, what we do is we take a uh, oropharyngeal or a nasopharyngeal swab which will be put in the viral transport media. Then we want uh, the, <coughs> the blood sample also, it's a serum as well as uh, EDTA sample is, is required. Pinne proven cases ne. proven cases ne, as of now we have three proven cases or confirmed cases of novel coronavirus in the state. E patients in the the stool sample and urine sample and actually ICMR ready because US le the index case le stool le the virus was isolated. So that definitely does have some implications for IPC measures. If we can find the virus in the stool, then the fecal oral transmission also may be a possibility. So proven cases in matram stool sample. Uh, the urine sample is not. All the number of suspect cases in all the what we take is the 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 <coughs> oral the <coughs> oropharyngeal or the nasopharyngeal swab, which will be put in a viral transport media. Then two sets of blood. One is the for the serum and the and the EDTA sample. So this all the number triple layer packing is As of now, we are sending to a DSO in our equip, so district surveillance officer, and from they will facilitate the transport of these specimens to the NIV Alapra unit. That is what is being done for the diagnostic arm. Now, coming to the clinical features, we did uh, decide, uh, we will discuss about that. That is fever, uh, dry cough, and dyspnea in around one third of the cases. And usually, dyspnea were in the, in the second week. Uh, that is the Lancet article, like the eighth day, land, the onset of dyspnea, and the patients may progress to pneumonia, which will resemble just like any atypical pneumonia. It will be bilateral ground glassing, infiltration, and all those stuff. And uh, around 10 percentage of these patients, so severe patients, or 10 percent will require invasive ventilatory support. Now, the other clinical clues, that is the lab clues will be, uh, th there is no alterations in the HB value, there, there is going to be the, a leukopenia or a normal WBC count with lymphocytopenia, it is going to be neutrophilia. Thrombocytopenia is mild, there is a bit of a transaminate is occurring, acute kidney injury is described in around 6% cases, CPK is uh, elevated in around say 15% cases, LDH also is elevated. So, basically, so, any patient presenting with uh, a sari like symptom with uh, uh, leukopenia, lymphocytopenia, a, a bit of transaminitis, if the patient is coming from an affected country, probably you need to entertain a diagnosis of novel coronavirus, isolate the patient and send a sample for confirmation to uh, NIV Alapura. But the, the, the clinical arm. Related to important item in the carrier, as you all know that we don't have a specific treatment for this. So what we do is that majority of the patients are presenting with influenza-like illness. So we categorize them as per the ABC criteria. If the patient is in B1, B2, and C. We will start the patient on oseltamivir, and then suppose the 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 test is coming as positive for novel coronavirus, then we need to decide because as of now we do have only supported treatment for novel coronavirus infection. Probably by around fifth day, the patient may develop a secondary bacterial infection and in that scenario, you have to start antibiotics based on your institution antibiotic policy to cover for the secondary 
bacterial infection. The rest of the treatment is supportive. The patient requires a ventilatory care, go for ventilation as per the protocol, etc. So, does any antiviral have a definite role in the treatment of novel coronavirus infection? As of now, the answer is no. We do not have any accepted antiviral for use in novel coronavirus infection, but there are certain candidates which have been tried in various uh, settings across the world. You know that in uh, the lopinavir, ritonavir is very effective, it is found to be effective for SARS virus as well as for uh, in MERSCO, which was tried in South Korea. Anyway, it is not an approved drug for SARS or MERSCO. For the same drug is being used for a compassionate purpose in other countries also, like China, they are having an RCT going on, looking at the effectiveness of lopinavir, ritonavir against MERSCO, uh, against uh, novel coronavirus. But it's not an approved treatment for compassionate purpose if our patients do go into ARDS or something like that or severe pneumonia then probably for a compassionate ground we may use lopinavir ritonavir after getting the permission okay and then the next candidate is uh, the remedisvir this is a nucleotide analog which has been used in usa for the first uh, proven case of novel coronavirus infection in usa this also want to be an effective drug uh, but it is not approved for the use of novel coronavirus infection and china recently did started trial with uh, remedisvir. So, as of now, these are the modalities available to us. That is, one is lopinavir, ritonavir, second is remedisvir, which is not available in India, and then interferon nebulization. So, there is actually no approved drug for novel coronavirus infection, but for compassionate use, all these modalities may be concerned. So, for anything uh, where the, the specific drug is not available, the most important aspect definitely will be infection prevention and control and that is actually very very important for a healthcare professional because if you look at the, the epidemiology of SARS or MERSCO, maximum transmission occurred within the hospital settings. For example, in SARS, 58% of the patients ha, uh, had its origin from nosocomial transmission and that rate in MERSCO goes up to around 70%. So, this is very very important and the recently published article uh, regarding the, the clinical features of uh, novel coronavirus in the JAMA did say that 41% of patients did have nosocomial transmission. So, this is very, very important. So, transmission the epicenter definitely will be the, the healthcare facilities. Why is it so? Because the receptor uh, which the SARS uses to attach to a lower respiratory tract is the ACE2 angiotensin converting enzyme 2 and this is the same receptor which is used by the novel coronavirus. So, we know that from uh, the, the uh, <coughs> genomic sequencing data, the phylogenetic tree, etc., the novel coronavirus uh, uh, has around 80% homology to the SARS coronavirus and, and around 96% homology to the, the bat coronavirus. As of now, we know that the primary host is definitely the bats and the secondary host, as of now, we don't know. We have uh, means reports coming, it could be pangolin, etc. But regarding the secondary host, we don't have any idea. So, the primary host is definitely the bats. And from bats, the humans got infection directly or indirectly through the, the wet markets in the Wuhan province, etc. And then the human transmission did occur. So, in order to have a very effective IPC measure, we need to have a risk assessment to the healthcare workers. The risk assessment mean, is, is actually high. The reason being that you know, for all the, the viruses like SARS or MERS, which attach to a lower respiratory tract, the maximum infectivity usually occurs at the time when the patient is likely to be hospitalized. And you know that the coronaviruses are, uh, you know, the sort of a large virus, so it is not capable of airborne transmission, it is a droplet infection. So, once the patient gets admitted in the hospital, what happens is that the patient may undergo, if the patient is having pneumonia, may undergo aerosol generating procedures like suctioning or sometimes intubation, the nebulization, etc. In such scenarios, what happens is the droplet infection can behave like airborne infection. That is the reason why the, the people at maximum risk for getting the infection unfortunately happens to be the healthcare workers. So, that happened with SARS, that happened with MERS. So, we need to be very careful about the treatment of patients who are admitted in healthcare facilities with novel coronavirus infection also. So, in order to, to optimize the IPC measures, we need to know the transmission. So, transmission is usually it's a droplet infection. So, what are precautions you need to take? So, those patients, those doctors who are sitting in the, the corona clinic, so they need to be using the uh, the N95 mask that is very important because uh, they are going to take care of the, the suspect patients. Okay, So, usually for droplet infection N95 mask is definitely not needed. You require only a triple layer mask. So, the masks which are available to us are usually the double layer mask, triple layer mask as well as the N95 mask. So, ideally for novel coronavirus infection we require a triple layer mask or an N95 mask. Okay, The N95 mask should be reserved for people 
who are taking care of the patients in the IP setting. Okay, because the IP setting, the aerosolization chance is pretty high because we are going to do procedures like nebulization, suctioning. There, N95 mask is a must. For all other purposes, the triple layer mask is actually good enough. So, whether it be an N95 mask or a triple layer mask, the most important aspect is that it has to be worn properly. So, in improperly worn mask is going to be more dangerous. So, by using an N95 mask, we will take care of our the oral mucosa as well as the nose. Then what about our eyes? That is also very, very important. So in order to, uh, to prevent infection through the oral, uh, this, uh, the mucosa in the eye, we need to use goggles. This is a very, very important component. So what WHO says is that we need to take the standard precautions as well as transmission based precautions. The other components of standard precaution will be an apron as well as glove. So these are the basic things you need to uh, take care of when you are looking at a patient with coronavirus infection. That is your apron your glove, your N95 or a triple layer mask as well as the, the goggles. You need to follow the sequence of donning as well as doffing. Another very, very important aspect is the, the impetus on hand hygiene because it can actually spread by contact transmission also and sometimes through formates. So, so whenever you are getting an opportunity before touching a patient, after touching a patient, before a procedure, after a procedure and before touching the patient's environment, you need to do hand rubbing or hand washing. This is very, very important. So, the, the onus on our treatment about novel coronavirus infection in a hospital setting should actually, should pivot around the very good IPC measures. This is very, very important. So, our focus has to be on IPC measures. All our students as well as all our faculty members should be trained about the donning and doffing procedure and they need to follow it to a T. This is very, very important and never forget hand hygiene, do it either with al alcohol based hand rub or with uh, soap and water. So uh, what we should know is that we should never allow our hospitals to be an epicenter of nos nosocomial transmission novel coronavirus. As of now, uh, uh, we don't have any uh, secondary case in Kerala and hope so. And if no cases report within 28 days of a, a diagnosis of the first case, we can declare Kerala corona free. Uh, uh, life is in our hands. Thank you very much.